I was 13 when I was told. I was just eight years old. I found out on my 15th. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. I was given medicine by a syringe. My parents knew since my birth. I was told by a nurse. It felt like a curse. It was my mum that broke the news. I thought I was gonna die. Not me. I put it aside, I didn't cry. I was playing footy, full of energy, fighting fit. <laughs> I wasn't ill. They told me to sit. I never sit. Three nurses, two doctors, and a specialist said I had HIV. I was confused, it meant nothing to me. They assume you understand, but I really didn't know what it was, it didn't land. <laughs> I thought it wasn't a big deal, I mean, I took it as a joke, but... Then I saw my mum and she was choked. In total shock, like, brimming with tears, and only then, only then, did I feel fear. This thing I had must be bad. Why else would mum be sad? When I was young, my mum died of cancer. I don't know if that's true, but when I asked, that was the answer. I grew up with it, in and out of hospital all the time. I took medication every day, but I didn't know why. I thought it was part of being a kid, that that was what all children did. Then in year eight, we had a lesson on STDs. So I asked my grandparents, do I have HIV? They looked surprised, thought I already knew. But honestly, I didn't have a clue. It was never spoken about, then one night it came up on TV. It was my parents and me. Comic relief made an appeal from Malawi. Some despairing kids and their dying mum. There was a silence in the room. I felt numb. I thought, is that what I've got? It can't be, I'm totally healthy. Those images are still with me. My mum said, never tell anybody. People will reject you. They'll know you got it from me. Just lie. Like a fool, at primary school, I broke her rule. I told a friend who told his mum, who was scared and shared it with the headmaster, who broadcasted it faster than a newscaster during a national disaster to all the staff. And then my mum got called in, hauled in to explain the appalling tale. By then, everyone knew. The head asked... Is it true? No. So she didn't get it through you? No. Neither of us have HIV. Oh, good. Because I didn't think you were that kind of woman. What the hell did he mean? It's obscene to demean people like that, as if you're to blame and have to feel shame. It's not my fault and it's not my mum's fault. There's no enigma to the stigma. People are stuck in the past. If I take my medication with dedication, then my viral load is undetectable. Yeah, undetectable, there's a very simple equation. U equals U. Undetectable equals untransmittable. And untransmittable means you can't get it from me. And you can't get it from me. Not through sex. If we had a baby, it wouldn't have HIV. It's outrageous. People think it's contagious. You can't get it from a kiss. From piss on the floor. From touching my door. From drinking my drink. From licking my sink. From touching my skin. From the clothes I'm in. From holding my hands. We haven't got AIDS. No, they're not the same. We won't die. We're totally fine. We don't need your pity. We just need you to be educated. <laughs> At school, it's taught as an STD. But that's not how I got HIV. They're still saying if you get it, you die. But that's a lie. It's just a way of scaring guys into wearing a condom, but that's not why you should use a condom. Whenever you have sex, you should put one on. It's a manageable medical disease, like asthma or diabetes. But for some reason, it's not the same. Diabetics don't hide away in shame. They take meds just like us. So what's the fuss? Why is HIV used to cuss? My mother won't let me tell my brothers, so I'm not going to tell others. I lie to my own kith and kin. And that's another thing. I got it, but my siblings didn't. Even at home, I keep it hidden. When I found out, I shut down. Headphones on, and I shut down. Skeptosome, you know it. Don't let it show. Shut down. Let no one know. Shut down. Can't talk to my folks. Shut down. Bad taste jokes. Shut down. Don't tell friends. Shut down. Boyfriends, girlfriends. Shut down. Don't let it show. Let no one know what I'm going through. Cause I shut down. Don't talk to me. Shut down. HIV. And I shut down! I was 12 when I found out. And for three years I showed no emotion. I was going through the motions. The rage had been building and it got to the stage where I felt like I was drowning. Now I'd just been for my tests. I needed a rest. My mum asked me if I'd got more sweets. Now, that was her way of being discreet. I completely blew a fuse, started hurling abuse, picked up the table, went completely mental. 
and threw it across the room. Then the, the chairs, the books, the broom. Mum backed into her bedroom, let me fume and shout. I had a tantrum and stormed out and walked and walked. Since that day, we've never talked, Mum and me. We've never talked about our HIV. I wrote my mum a letter. Dear mum, I believe if we spoke about HIV as a family, things would be better. I don't want to be the one lying to my brothers and sister. I don't want to keep anything secret from them or feel ashamed when I have to lie. Mum, I love you so much. I wish you didn't fear other people's judgment. You don't have to be scared. Please talk to me. No more secrets. I could never say that to my mum. Nor me. I didn't post it. Take your meds and you'll be undetectable. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But taking meds every day is really hard. It's ironic you feel well, and then you take your pills and then you start to feel ill. I've never had any problems with them. A lot of people don't get any side effects. They're lucky. Mine tastes like cement. I hate the scent. They make me feel so sick. I can't eat, I'm in pain. Can't sleep, I vomit. Spend hours in the loo or crying in my room. I'm thinking, am I going to be in a state for the rest of my days? This is my fate. Just let me fly away. Sometimes I switch off my alarm. If I miss one day, what's the harm? I know I shouldn't. But if I'm in a bad mood, feeling blue, I flush them down the loo. Oh God, if my mum knew. I had no control over anything at the time except my disease, well, that was mine. I, I didn't believe life could fulfill me. I just thought, let it kill me. I started to get abdominal pains. My stomach would clench and quiver. It was affecting my liver. I was rushed to hospital as quick as you can. It was doom and gloom, but in the waiting room, my dad held my hand. He said, I love you. It was the first time he ever said that. Moving. I see things moving that aren't moving. Occasionally I get hallucinations. I'm losing the plot. Haven't told the doctors what I got. Suffering from fatigue, aggression, suicidal thoughts and depression. You might not realise that what you're going through has nothing to do with you. It might just be a side effect of what you're taking. The doctors are insistent about being consistent because if you miss them, then the virus builds resistance and then they switch you to something new. And if you miss those two, then your options reduce and it's a slippery slope to position without hope. For some healthcare professionals, it's all about the science. An obsession with compliance. They tell me the same thing every time I go. Stuff I already know. Scare stories about people who miss their meds. When you can't sleep at night and your head's not right. When you feel sick from the tabs and the tests and the stabs. When you're debased by the stigma you face. When you have low self-esteem and your medical team can't see that you're struggling because they're judging your adherence and ignoring your experience. It's very troubling. When I was moved from paediatrics to adult care, they didn't know who I was or why I was there. I was 16. It wasn't easy. I was sent to the ward for sexual diseases. But you can change your meds and find the ones that work best for you. My doctor's great. I mean, if there's something she doesn't know, she's not scared to say so. She doesn't judge my inconsistency, but works with me on a strategy. Uh, at first, she uh, rang me every day at home, and then she set an alarm on my phone. And when the meds made me sick, she said this would do the trick, and gave me anti-sick pills that worked real quick. She asks about me and all the things I do. She says, you can do this. I believe in you. I like the way she listens and, and shares all the decisions. She's the only one I can find in. To everyone else, I'm hiding. It's very hard telling people. Yeah, it is. There was a girl. I liked her and she liked me. We had great chemistry. But she didn't know I had HIV. I was 16, I didn't know what to do. I was too scared to share the truth. So I cut her off. Disappeared from her life. Left her alone, changed my phone. She'll never know why. I was dating and it got so frustrating because my girlfriend wanted to make love. I, I'd held back for a while as I often do, but Lord, Bob, I wanted to. So I told her the truth. And she wasn't rude, she showed me respect, but, but that's where the story ends. She said, maybe we should just be friends. I met a guy, handsome and sweet. We'd been together for a few weeks and I wanted to see what his attitude was to HIV. So I asked him what he knew, he said, Not much, what about you? I casually threw him some facts to see how he'd react. I was encouraged by his curiosity, his lack of animosity. He passed the test and I was determined to tell him. But I thought it best to write it on my phone. If 
If I said it out loud, I might freeze or get thrown. I watched him read it with dread. Negative scenarios filled my head. I said to myself, if he takes it badly, it's not meant to be. But if he takes it well, he could be the one for me. It's long, isn't it? Yeah. There's so much to explain. I was waiting to be rejected, but what happened next was unexpected. This changes nothing. Now I know the score. If anything, I love you more. Four years later and we're still together. This one could last forever. My doctor told me about a camp. Everyone there was just like me. Young people born with HIV. It's not something I'd normally choose, but by then I had nothing to lose. My future looked bleak, but everything changed in that week. It was more fun than I thought it would be. I didn't have to lie, I felt so free. After a few days, we had a powerful bond. <laughs> Though we hadn't known each other long, like I'd found a new family. I'm loved and happy here, and for me, that's pretty rare. My confidence has grown, because now I know I'm not alone. We know what you're going through, and this is our advice to you. There's going to be a lot of confusion, a lot of doubt, a, a lot of anger that you have to work out, but it won't always be that way. That day will come when you feel okay. Sure, life's not fair, but there's support out there. You're not alone. You are not alone. Don't let it define you. We are more than just HIV. I have qualities you don't often see. I'm filled with love and empathy, and that's just the start. I am a great friend. I have a big heart. I will not bend. I had a low spell, been through hell, and now I'm coming back to terms with HIV. As part of a community, we're strong. We're tough. We're unbowed. We're responsible. We're wise. And we, we are, are proud. proud. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>